Hello and welcome back to Talk Toys. This is the uh, second episode where we're kind of still uh, focusing on the best of 2020. So if you missed the previous one, that was all about the best games of 2020 and the best game we played in 2020, uh, which is going to be the same format for this one where we discuss movies, as you could, you could probably tell from the title. So this episode, we're going to be discussing the best movie of 2020 the best movie we saw in 2020 and probably we may try and fit in the best music stuff of the year um be it released this year or you listen to this year so uh as with last episode i am joined with my three guests again we've got dan hello we've got tim hello and tom all right all right then so uh let's dive straight in shall we there's no need for a preamble so this is the best movie of 2020 now <laughs> admittedly there weren't many movies of 2020 really because of current social thing going on uh that we can't really discuss but unfortunately yes uh, lots of cinemas were closed this year lots of film you know film uh, studios and stuff had to shut down and so there wasn't much on offer but you know we had the first few months and we did have things eke out throughout the year so with all that said and done my favorite film of this year and one i know one other person here has seen uh is weathering with you which is uh, Makoto Shinkai's latest anime film. Uh, he was the director of <laughs> Five Centimeters Per Second, uh, along with Your Name, which was another massive hit. Uh, so I'll, I'll briefly just give the summary. Weathering With You is about a kind of teenage boy who moves to Tokyo, uh, kind of runs away from home to Tokyo, uh, and he starts working at a paranormal investigation magazine where he eventually bumps into a girl who can seemingly control the weather and then it kind of expands out from there basically um and yeah honestly weathering with you is uh, akin to a lot of makoto shinkai's previous work is a really touching like story in general but is also beautiful to look at the um the the animation studio he works with uh, he's part of is just insane that it is um it's the type of it's the type of movie that you could probably take a screenshot every few minutes and turn it into like one of those really cool chill backgrounds because th there's just there's that l loving attention to detail and stuff and um, honestly all the like i i saw the film with you in the cinema and, and honestly i i totally forgot about it i uh i saw that film and uh i regret uh not putting it as my choice because uh honestly it's um it's visually amazing and the narrative also holds up and honestly you could yeah. each frame you could have like as a desktop background it's um it's, yeah. it's, it's an awesome film so i i also recommend that it's uh yeah it, it's highly recommended it it is it is that kind of slightly more whimsical take on things that anime generally tends to have. So I'm sure if you have a sort of like uh, everything needs to be serious and grounded kind of thing, then you're not going to enjoy it. But honestly, Weathering With You, I think, is just it. it's a phenomenal film. Uh, and yeah, and it, and it did release the very start of the year in like January, which uh, means that you know, has kind of led to it feeling like he was releasing a different year, because, man, times were different back then. Uh, yeah, that is my nomination for Best Film of 2020. Uh, would anyone like to nominate their thing? Yes, I shall go ahead. Okay. Now, about this one, this one, right, is on a technical thing, because, uh, in my view, one of the best films I, I've seen... Um, which I saw this year, which was Parasite. However, Parasite was officially released last year, but it was released in the UK in yes. early, early, early twenty twenty. So I wanted to know what yeah, you guys. Yeah, no, thought. I'll I'll fully allow that. I, uh, I'm just gonna put. I'm just gonna say you then. Um... <laughs> I've actually put Parasite as my favourite movie I've watched. Well, uh, don't worry, because I've got but, another uh, follow-up. 
I got another follow up, and if if you want, Tom can go ahead and explain about twenty twenty because I got like another film that I saw, which actually came out this year, uh, uh, which was pretty good. I um, it was called The Five Bloods. Oh yeah. Oh, and it's, uh, it. yeah. It's uh, uh, Spike Lee's uh, new film. Uh, he I'm trying to think what other film he he did. Um, uh, oh, he, he did uh, Black Klansman. Ah, yes. Which oh, that's really good as well. But I think The Five Bloods is more um, more comic, but like, but it's also really uh, dark and. It's like a dark comedy, really, and um, but there's like a lot of surprises along the way, which I kind of didn't expect, and uh, it's got some um, great, great, great acting in it, and it's got the late actor Chadwick Boseman in it, mm-hmm. um, and he plays a really great role in that, and uh, honestly, one of his probably uh, as alongside um, Black Panther. I'd say it's one of his best uh, performances, so it's worthy just to to watch it um, for that. And um, but basically, it's about these four African American vets who return to Vietnam and they're on their quest to seek the remains of their fallen squad leader and um, the gold fortune they found over there so they're trying to find that as well so it's it's a lot of uh, drama but it's just a really good film so um yeah so that's my I, i'll uh i'll i'll put that as my uh favorite then okay yeah that's i love cool. parasite oh parasite. well we, we'll get on to that in a minute yeah. uh nice uh right who would like to go next for their best film of 2020 nomination Mine is also kind of a uh, a technicality, and by technicality I mean a complete um, misinterpretation of what you asked. <laughs> because my film did not come out in 2020, it came Ooh. out in 2019. It was late 2019, and I thought, oh, it probably came out like in some places in 2020. So I tried to like go on the internet and find out if it came out in some like obscure country in 2020, but no, it does look like it came out in November 2019. So okay. I'm I'm offering myself to your mercy. Does this count? Am I allowed uh, to put this film forward? Yeah, I I mean I I I'd have been happy to have accepted Parasite to be honest, but yeah, um I I'm I'm fine with that. There, there's no there's no strict criteria really. I think so long as so long as I suppose you watched it this year and to you it feels like a 2020 movie. Uh, yep. Especially given the dearth of like the you know the, the, there were not many films out this year. I I think we can be very lenient. So yeah. In that case, I'm going to put forward Knives Out, which was ah. a I don't know I I wasn't expecting it to be a very good film, but um I caught it this year and it kind of surprised me how good it was. I thought it was going to be kind of just a all right, this movie will be okay, but hmm. no, it was it was genuinely just a really really good movie. It's basically a murder mystery. Um, this guy dies, and um, basically he's got his whole big family arguing over who gets his inheritance. Um, initially, they all think, oh, he, it, it was suicide. Like, we'll just cast it off as suicide. But this um, investigator, played by Daniel Craig, gets a tip off that maybe it wasn't suicide so he comes along and does all this investigating um there's a big kind of bombshell that goes off that it turns out that in his will he's left everything to um his carer instead of anyone in his family so then the rest of the movie is the inspector working with this carer to kind of clear her name because all the family wants to pin it on her because then she wouldn't get anything if it turns out she did kill him and uh, they kind of work together to just kind of trying to clear her name and find out who actually did kill him. Mm-hmm. Got a fantastic cast. Like I said, it's got Daniel Craig in it, uh, Chris Evans, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, and uh, really, really good performances, I'd say. I think they're the kind of performances that you wouldn't expect out of those people because they're usually kind of in different types of them. They all just do really well. It's by, uh, by Ryan Johnson. Straight after his uh, slightly controversial <laughs> run of movies following up to it, which 
we shall uh, discuss, so we'll be here till the end of days. <laughs> but um, it, needless to say, it, it was much better than, than the Star Wars movies that he was involved with. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that was definitely by far my favourite film that I watched and came out in 2020. <laughs> Nice, yeah. I, I, you know, I've, I've never seen it, but I, I saw a lot of praise being given to it and stuff. Um, late last year, early this year, and stuff. So yeah, I, um, I, I'd, I'd come to twenty twenty anyway because I assumed it was this year. There you go. Uh, right. So that leaves Tom's nomination for best film of twenty twenty. So Tom, I wonder where it could be. I'm just gonna say I haven't got one, and yeah, oh, I was gonna. Okay. Considering you you asked us, uh, what was your favorite film you watched this year? Yeah, that's fine. Well, in that uh, case, but on then... Dan's technicality, I guess we could put it through. Yeah, I Go mean, I, I'm I'm happy to accept it. Or if you don't want to nominate anything for 2020, we can just start the best film you watch in 2020 category. It's up to you. I will call it that because. Okay, the, just so to be safe. so we will begin the best film you watched in 2020. So. Tom, you're welcome to start this uh, category off with us. I think okay, we so we know best... what it is, but you know. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's Parasite. Um, oh, I think um, Tim, have you watched it? I know you two have. Um, I have. Dan and Rudy, I yeah. have not. No, so no spoilers. <gasps> oh, oh, I don't know how much I could talk about it then. Um, well, I know the basic premise, so don't worry about that. But, oh, okay, yeah, okay, no yeah, spoilers. it's basically. Um, well, it's a story. It's, a, it's basically a story about the haves and have nots in society. And um, simply put, um, a family who live in a really run down apartment um, kind of insert themselves into jobs in this, um, this affluent family's uh, kind of massive house. Uh, it's a fantastic film. It's um, I I I'd say it's a black comedy, definitely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, and honestly, it's been I think it's been my first foray into Korean film, anyway. Um, and it's absolutely fantastic. It's I, such a great film. Was worthy of the Academy Award. Not that I big on you know. A, awards but if anything that needed a best picture that was for that film and yeah it's well deserved it's it's definitely well deserved um it won the oscar didn't it um yeah which yeah. is which is so, mind-blowing i think is that the first time in oscars yes yeah, so the first in, uh, in, first uh in yeah uh, like non film to be to win a best picture award which yeah. is which is a good feat really and 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 I, you know, to be honest, I, I've been watching a lot of, um, well, and my family as well. We could, we watch a lot of like kind of dramas and stuff that are in, um, um, different languages. So it's, mm. um, so I, th so yeah, yeah. I mean, what can be said is, is a, it's a great film. I love the, um, uh, I, that's the thing because Tim, Tim hasn't seen. It. I don't want to go too deep in the mm. deep end. But yeah, I mean, I, really... I don't want to go into too much spoilers anyway because obviously, if people are listening to this and want oh, to watch yeah, it, oh yeah, yeah, I'm not going to tell them the entire plot, you know. But uh, the it, it goes in directions you would not expect, and yeah. I'll just leave her at that. And it's, it's an absolute treat. I'd suggest uh, everyone to watch it. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. as 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 you as you mentioned, it it's a black comedy because it kind of melds. It's quite dramatic. It's quite serious, but it is kind of funny. It's a little bit weird. It's like it's got a lot of elements that just like, I mean, they it's... they work together, but I think it also typifies what like the difference between like foreign film and like you know American blockbusters or whatever, even British films. Oh, it's it? definitely trying to carry a message as well. I think. I think yeah. What the attention to detail, um, in terms of like how the, uh, the film is shot and, like honestly, I I would compare. Um, what's what's the director? Um, Park. Uh, I can't remember his name now. Uh, like I I mean this is quite a big uh thing, but I honestly if I feels like I'm watching a Hitchcock movie, you know. 
like like north well not uh, like north by northwest or anything like that but it you know very much of an auto kind of um creation and uh, it feels very unique and honestly um i'd love to see more films by him um i know he did some other film called ok yeah or some, oh. yeah I, th- I think he's had a few uh quite big films in the past but big as in like in a more limited sense uh you know obviously it was it was quite good apparently but more among the, the foreign uh, film crowds obviously uh his name is bon jun ho bon jun ho that's it right yes yeah. Uh. Right. So. So, Dan, am I presuming that's your best film that you watched twenty twenty? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there we are. No. No. It, it. It's good. It's just so I know what to put up on screen. So it. It'll probably have changed to Dan's pick as well. Uh. To Parasite there. So. Hey. I mean, a, a first in Talk Toys history. The nomination has been shared between <coughs> two. Two of the four people here, which is. Uh, yeah. No. Abs- absolutely. I think. Uh, it. You know, I don't think much more can be said, really, about the quality of Parasite. It is banging. Uh, so, right. Tim, do you want to nominate next? And we'll do this in full reverse order, then. Oh, okay. Um, I got a bit stuck on the next one, because apart from um, Knives Out, I think that was the only new film I watched this year. I think I had a very nostalgic year, because I wanted I to kind you. of revisit films that I've seen in the past. So I'm just gonna pick one of the ones yeah, that I rewatched. So I I have seen this before, but it's worth mentioning anyway. Yeah. So I watched it I think twice this year while in lockdown. Um, but that's um Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. Hey. Uh, such a good movie. <clears throat> like yes. the best Spider Man movie. Um, I don't know. The thing I love about it is, what the way they've taken like the Spider Man kind of formula and. I just think it works better animated. Mm. They can do such crazy stuff and bring in such out of the box characters and kind of just make it more stylish. Which I the think animation is the great. The animation is beautiful. And as much as I do enjoy, you know, the the Tom Holland Spider Man movies, uh, they, they, I think they do lack something in the way of being true to kind of a Spider Man movie. That I don't think they'll ever get with a live action Spider Man movie. It's yeah. just, I think it's too cool, <laughs> which sounds stupid because obviously they want it to be cool. But I think Spider Man works better when it's a bit, um, kind of a bit quirky and a bit, it brings yeah. the kind of humor of Spider Man into it more. I think. I think they kind of go too, too hard in the let's make it cool. Hmm. I will say right, right. So I think the, um, I'm 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 trying to think in terms of all like Peter Parker and Spider Man uh, versions. There are I I still think that Tobey Maguire is one of my favorites. Um, I do like um Tom Holland because having him cast as a young kid that's the only thing you find hmm. with the modern ones. Even with the uh, who who's the other one? Andrew Garfield. Toby... <clears throat> yeah, Andrew Garfield was that. Yeah, I'm a teenager, but I'm, you know, in real life, they're, like, in their late 20s, early 30s. Yeah. And... I think, as well, what what worked really well for Into the Spider-Verse, because, um, I mean, and, and it's very similar to, I think, what made another one of my favourites, which is technically just a dis no, just a Pixar movie? I can't remember. Is Big Hero 6, which... Disney. Disney. Oh, Disney. Disney. Right, okay, sorry. That So that was technically just a Disney film. Right, but yeah, but... I think the reason that worked is the reason Into the Spider-Verse worked, which is a lot of Marvel characters work as comic book characters, but not as real people. Mm. And and mm. when you cast real people to do real things as these characters, it does feel a little bit awkward. It's why, it, it's why I felt, whilst I really like the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, part of me does feel like, oh man, if they'd made, made this animated or CGI, they could have made really crazy stuff because mm. like ultimately while limited to even even with cg it's still got to look real life to some regards whereas into the spider-verse could just be like oh yeah um you know fisk is like 12 feet tall and he's like as wide as a train or something yeah exactly uh and yeah that, that just made it what it is or you know like the spider bot and stuff you could have 
zany things instead of just like, oh, he, he looks a bit tall, doesn't he? Exactly. And the other thing that Into the Spider-Verse did really well is focus on Miles Morales, because we've, we've seen Peter Parker like 10,000 times. So yes. coming at it from a completely different perspective, which gave it a lot of its kind of style choices, is just... Really yeah, I like all the different, uh, like all the characters uh, fit in, and I like mm. Miles Morales's arc, and because you know everybody, uh, without going into too much detail, everyone has their own arc that's been laid out, oh. and uh, whereas we're trying to think, oh well, what's gonna, what's Miles Morales's um, arc, and and you see it happening, and it's just like, oh that yeah. works perfectly and it's, it's it's great it's um i like nicholas cage uh, as uh <laughs> so good as uh, spider-man like noir green. and there's the uh oh who voices the uh porky spider oh uh, john mulaney john uh, mulaney yes. yeah his is like was a bit out there but it was just the right level if you oh, know yeah. what i mean it was yeah. it was quirky and when i first watched it i thought that was zach braff <laughs> And I, you couldn't tell me that it wasn't. Ah. I had to look it up. I was like, I, I swear to God, that's Zach Braff, but no, it isn't. But yeah. yeah, without veering off too much. Yeah, yeah. Hearing all the rumors about the um the new live action Spider Man, where they're doing a kind of similar Spider Verse oh, thing, and they're getting all the Spider Men in. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be amazing, <laughs> but it's also going to be an absolute mess. <laughs> like mm-hmm. they, they've. The yeah. big thing everyone hated about the third original Spider-Man movie was that they tried to do too much and bring in too many characters. Yes. <laughs> it just sounds like what they're doing with this one. Yeah. It's, it's the curse of the third Spider-Man live-action movie. But it's going to be, uh, even if it is a mess, it's going to be a fun-to-watch mess, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I think... Characters going back, Dr. Octopus and fucking all that stuff, it's, it's going to be... There's I no think... way they can fuck it up properly. Mm. Right, if, going on about the third film, I think it was just how it was executed. Like, like... You know, it was, I think it was just my big thing. I remember watching it in the cinema when it came out. Uh, yeah. uh, 40, was it 2007? So around then, yeah. Yeah, roughly. Oh, 14 years ago. Damn, yeah. Damn. But anyway, yeah. so I remember watching it in the cinema with my mate, and we were just laughing throughout the whole thing because yep. it was like these really edgy, serious. He has this uh, emo haircut and and the dance and but what yeah. i what i like about uh what i like about the the um uh into the Sp- spider verse they they mention it that like yeah that happened yeah. as well and it, you, you just uh, it's very self-aware which i mm. i really like yeah it, exactly. it's full of references it's sort of the the more you're into spider-man i think the more you get out of it basically yeah it's, uh you you could watch it not knowing who spider-man is uh, or you could watch as a mega fan, I think. It it works just as well, really. Have they given a name for the new Spider Man yet? No. 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 Well it's it's I still mean, I've got an idea. Spider Man, the dimensional merge. Hey. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That would no, be uh that's been copyrighted by a certain yeah. individual. I I, I, I feel <laughs> like uh you know, that's that that that's too on the nose. That's uh <laughs> clearly ripping off um but i feel like they are kind of like well i don't want to say ripping off but <laughs> they are coming off with the idea of like oh right well this uh spider-verse happened let's let's do it for real this time with i i think it's less i think it's less copying into the spider-verse because uh, i think they kind of been building up to it for a while because <laughs> ever since they announced one division it's like oh they're, they're gonna do like a yeah this kind of thing but yeah, I'm I'm excited to see how it pans out. Yeah, right. Um. Uh, well, I shall move on to my pick then for the best movie I watched 2020. Um, failure of left field. I've watched a lot of movies this year, uh, and specifically the reason I watch a lot of movies is I have a sort of hobby of whenever I'm in town, I go to charity shops and buy DVDs of like interesting sounding movies or whatever because they're really cheap. Um. So I've seen a wide variety this year, but my my pick for the best film I've seen in 2020 is Contact, uh, which is a 1997 
sci-fi movie based on a book written by Carl Sagan. Uh, so the, the the real basic premise is basically um, there's a girl who whose father died when she was quite young, uh, but who's really into astrology. So when she grew up, she went to work for SETI, which is the search for f- the the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, um, and is basically kind of on the lookout for you know alien contact and stuff. Uh, and one day, after after a lot of uh, a lot of searching, they do get a bit of contact and the weird thing is the contact seems to be a set of instructions so i'll leave it there i'm not going to go any further into it um have you guys seen this or heard of it the only thing i know about contact isn't there a scene where she like plays football on the beach with her dead dad or am i thinking of something yes else? yeah there you go it's um <laughs> that's the only thing i know about contact is it yeah. uh, jordy foster I yeah. believe so. Yeah, Julie Foster, um, um, Matthew McConaughey. Um, so yeah, so it's man, con- uh, like, so, I, 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 I think, I think Contact is one of those possibly polarizing movies. So I really like it because it reminds me in part of Interstellar, which is oh. it's a sci-fi movie. It's a fairly standard sort of premise. You know, it, it goes into its own thing. And it, but it brings up two things that I really, really enjoyed. One, a really strong metaphysical concept of kind of like, hey, th- these are just things humans can't understand. The, there's parts of the universe that if we do discover, we cannot understand because we're limited. Uh, which was a part of Interstellar as well, which I really loved. Um, and the second one, and the one I didn't expect at all, but throughout, there's a really, really strong theme of like faith and religion versus like science and facts and stuff if that makes sense um but but it's it's not in the sense of kind of like one side is clearly stupid but it's like it presents both sides as a kind of like how there are strengths and weaknesses to everything and taking a stance a hard stance one way or the other is like you know is isn't the way to go and stuff and obviously Carl Sagan I, I you know I think is he had a brilliant mind you know and um and yeah it, it's just contact kind of summarizes everything I kind of love because um, there's the iconic poster or well the the cover of the DVD and the poster and stuff which um is in the very large array in New Mexico which is like 27 radar dishes basically um and yeah, and basically, if if you're really into things like SETI and kind of like um, radar and stuff like that, it's it's really cool because th- there's there's a fucking ton of jargon. It's like this is clearly written by someone who's into it, rather than you know a kind of like executive board who's like, what what's hip with the kids these days? Sci-fi. Let's try one and do one of those. They like that baby, don't they? He's a businessman. <laughs> I've, I've, right. I feel I feel like Boss Baby came out slightly later than 1997, uh, for better or for worse, <laughs> I think. But it's yeah, quite a similar yeah. film to, uh, to Contact, I believe. Yeah. I mean, didn't Carl Sagan also say, uh, if you want to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe? Y- yes. Yeah, that's a great line. Okay, cool. I, 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 I don't, I don't know where you were going with that. That was, that was a really I don't know. I, weird. I, I, with Carl Sagan in general, I think he's yeah. just uh, one of yeah. those cool guys. And the fact that he said, like, "Hey, uh, let's uh, make a movie based on my book," and you would think it'd be quite, because it's not very action packed. Would you say? Oh like, no, no, it's it's a it's a cerebral uh, film. Yeah. Like I, if you're. <laughs> Basically, if you're looking for some like something to be wowed by, you're kind of like, oh my god, that was super like, oh that was a crazy scene. Then d- just avoid contact. This yeah. Is. But two other things uh, I just remembered. I've got the wiki up here, which just reminded me. One is the fact it's directed by Robert Zemeckis, who directed Back to the Future. So, you know, already pretty pretty darn good. Uh, and also, I think, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to say this is true, but I'm assuming this may be the basis for the title of the last track in Random Access Memories by uh, Daft Punk, their latest album, uh, which is all about 
kind of like someone seeing something off in the distance and stuff. Uh, and also features yeah. an incredible drum solo for about four minutes. It's oh, it's a banger. What a tra- like what a way to finish an album. But that that's a, that's a different discussion. Uh, because I mean, we're not here to talk about music. Oh wait, what if we discuss <laughs> the best music of 2020? Do you see that segue? Uh, just saying, if uh, if Spotify want to hire me to make an official podcast, just uh, just just drop me a comment below. Uh, <laughs> as you as Spotify as an em- as an entity are watching YouTube videos, of course. Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. They so watch and hear everything. Right. So the music thing, I'll admit, is gonna be a lot more vague because uh, whilst whilst movies are a little bit more kind of something we can all uh, we all know about and kind of you know participate in, music is nebulous. There are. It's something I think I read somewhere. There's something like 200 albums releasing every day, in terms of music, because you take into account this obscure Brazilian rap group that started last week or something. You know, um. So this category is just your favorite music of 2020. So with this one, just an album or just an artist, even if you want, just to give a brief shout out to something you discovered that you really liked last year. Uh, so I'll start as a as a uh, way to demonstrate uh, my pick for best music of 2020 um, is the album Love Theism by Harun Emery, uh, who is a sort of experimental Japanese uh, artist. She's like it's it's very hard to describe Harun Emery. Um, it uh, uh, the the music in general at a glance kind of sounds very J-pop, very like cute and stuff. Uh, she's got very cute vocals and nice instruments and stuff, but the songs all kind of like they they, they go in strange and weird places. Uh, the, one of the best tracks of the album, Pink Unicorn, uh, starts you know two minutes of really cute, uh, slightly slightly fuzzy guitars and stuff, and uh, a cute song about a pink unicorn. And then there's like 20 seconds of silence, then there's like weird industrial beats and then the screaming and then it, it sort of, it, it, it it's very strange, but it is an incredible album. Uh, I did link Dan to it. I believe you listened to a bit of it. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's, um, Haru's been around for a while. I think this is like something like a fourth or fifth album. Um, and in fact, uh, she's kind of big in Japan because she's big enough to be featured on the needle drop. Uh so you know it's she is a known entity but is is still kind of thing. But yeah, that's uh that is the album I most enjoyed in 2020. Uh would anyone like to nominate their thing? It doesn't have to be something released last year. Just for clarity. Yeah. Just something like you discovered. The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> mine's a bit niche and it's by no means mainstream. It's like a tiny thing on the internet. But uh, I, I was thinking about it. One of the a pleasant surprise or something I found was bandcore. So it's like this <laughs> new made up genre. Um, I guess all things start that way. Even Vaporway have started that way of yeah. doing silly things to songs. Or well, bandcore is um, changing songs, changing all the instrumental and everything. So it's like, so it's like it's made in the Middle Ages. Wait, do you mean the bar- Renaissance Sorry, or do you medieval mean, times? Do you mean bardcore? Isn't it bardcore? Um. So yeah, it's sometimes called bardcore. Sometimes oh, okay. it's called bandcore. Ah, okay, right. I've only seen um, it discussed as bardcore, right? So sometimes even they'll um they'll come up with lyrics as well and there'll be people singing it there's only a few people on youtube who are doing it but um it's uh genuinely quite a surprise to me and um i'm not gonna lie sometimes now i've played some rpgs currently playing the witcher i'm not the witcher uh assassin's creed for um valhalla and i've actually put some of the music on in the background <laughs> Nice. Um, because it actually fits and it's done really well. Um, 
and like with the lyrics they change them to be relevant to the time period so ah. God, there was one for like pumped up kicks that's the famous changed... one yeah <laughs> yeah but they changed it about like a bow who got it, uh, a boy who got his dad's bow and yeah so i don't know it's been a bit of a surprise and i've like played some to you guys in the past now it's actually quite nice so yeah that's kind of my pick it's like that micro genre of yeah. bardcore slash bandcore i swear to god bandcore is a fitness workout <laughs> i've never heard it called bandcore before yeah, I've definitely I've, heard it as band. Core. I've only ever see, seen it described as bardcore, which I I always laughed at because obviously hardcore, bardcore. Uh, yeah, definitely bandcore. I just uh, okay. I I just looked it up. Nice. Well, I I don't know what I'm going to put as a picture for that. I'll probably put like the YouTube. Uh, well, I'll probably put. put a- I'll a put picture the picture of the Bayou tapestry because that's what they always <laughs> yeah. use. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. what they actually always use when they put it up. There we are. I'll I'll leave a link uh in the description below as well to like one or two uh recommendations by Tom. I'll put the pumped up kicks one. You you may have come across it yourself listening to it and already knew what Tom was on about before the rest of us did. <laughs> uh right. Next next up, who would like to nominate their music thing? I will go for it. Mm-hmm. I do want to give a couple of shout outs before I go into my main one. Okay. I want to give two shout outs. First shout out is, well, they're both for video games. The first shout out is for Final Fantasy VII Remake. I know I talked about it at length last time, but I want to give a quick shout out to it because the soundtrack is absolutely amazing. Yeah. The other thing I want to give a shout out to is the Kingdom Hearts Rhythm game, Melody of Memory. Yes. That came out this year and, oh, just so fun. I get very addicted to those types of games and I think the music that catalog of Kingdom Hearts is so bloody expensive and expensive, expansive, and they did a really good job kind of bringing it into a, a game and kind of incorporating story elements to it. So that was absolutely fantastic, and I really enjoyed listening to um, some old bangers that I forgot about. But I did actually pick an album that came out this year that I really enjoyed as well. Okay. And that's Reanimated by Everything Everything. Oh, nice. Really kind of a. Um, a band that I like everything that they do. <laughs> I think the album was supposed to. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it was, the album was supposed to come out earlier this year, but obviously it got delayed because of the thing that we cannot discuss: the current um, socio-economic situation. Yes, yes, yes. That. Um, but yeah, it's got some banging tracks on it. Um, it's very kind of. It's, it does a good job of balancing the line between being what you'd expect from everything, everything, and like what they put out before, but also kind of taking them in like a new-ish direction and kind of elevating what they've already put out. Um, but it's just, it's, it's really good music. It's the kind of thing that I think, I don't think anyone would listen to it and enjoy it straight off the bat. It's kind of, it's off-putting almost the way that the vocals work in an everything, everything song the first time you hear it, because it's, a lot of the times the lyrics are, are kind of spoken in a way and there's lots of like uh, kind of techno influences where it's, it's very edited and kind of techno in a way where they've kind of made the voice sound different so it's not very <laughs> melodic sometimes the way the singing is so it kind of, it kind of gets kind of gets makes you a bit on edge like oh well I don't like this but then the more you listen to it you're more like actually this is absolutely fantastic and it just sounds better than you thought it did the first time you listened to it nice. uh, I think one of my favourite tracks from the album is Planets nice <laughs> that, uh, sorry yes. I, I said that like I had more to say oh okay right really yeah song. <laughs> so basically nice. basically you said Planet and then you uh, you added the like linguistical version of a comma and then kind of like you Question you wrong. hit you hit enter twice to start a new paragraph. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And, and that was completely intentional. There we are. Awesome. Yeah, there we are. I'll I'll chuck that I'll chuck the album cover up on the screen. Well, it should have been up already if I'm doing my editing correctly. Um right, so that leaves us, I believe, with Dan, your pick for music in twenty twenty, but not of twenty twenty necessarily. Mm. This was tough because I'm a big music head. Um, 
Uh, a lot that I've listened to this year didn't actually come out this year. Um, there's this band that I really got into called Drab Majesty, and uh, they're just like this gothic, dark wave kind of band, and they made an album uh, called The Demonstration, and it's um, like it's a concept album about the Heaven's Gate cult. Ah, and I see. It's uh, it's just a uh, yeah, really, like it nails the um, eighties goth, and they kind of elevate it to like new heights, and it's um, it's incredible. But I, I mm. last that came that came out well, th- none of their albums came out in twenty twenty. But yeah, I that's fine. A lot. Yeah, no, of, of um, course, honestly, like your, say, your pick can be anything. Uh, it, it I will doesn't... say though, hmm. um. Um, best uh, well, best album um, of the of the, of twenty twenty for me. Uh, I think I, re- I I really like uh, uh, Thundercats album. It is what it is, uh, and it's like Thundercats a so, for you. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is, and it's just a, it's a fun album. Like I was gonna put um, another album. Uh, by one of tricks point never, um, called Magic One of Tricks Point Never, and that's a awesome album as well. I think I showed you guys uh, some of the tracks, and uh, you guys were like, "Oh, this is actually pretty good." It's like, it's it's very experimental album, but for me, hmm. it is what it is. By Thundercat, it's just it's just a fun album. Like he he makes a song called Dragon Ball Do Rag, and he. And the music video, you know, like some music videos are made and they're just there for show. I feel like this one just amps up the the music even more. He just goes around to various uh, uh, potential uh, love interests uh, wearing a Dragon Ball do rag, <laughs> singing about his Dragon Ball do rag, and it's nice. it's just funny and. Um, I guess he's got a certain kind of humor, um, but the thing is, this this guy Thundercat has been on um, a lot of other albums. Like um, he's worked with um, Kendrick Lamar I on the, on the, um, a few of his uh, albums, which which are considered classics of the last decade. Uh, he's worked with Flying Lotus. He's worked with. Childish Gambino, Kamasi Washington. Uh, there's a lot of big names, you know, and um, the album was dedicated to the late Mac Miller. So, uh-huh. um, but but yeah, honestly, my favorite track uh, is uh, Houseway. And it's only like one minute, 15 seconds. I had to look it up on the wiki. I don't know. But it was a very short track. But it's just his bass playing is fantastic. It is. Um, he has like a like when he's playing live, he has like a, his famous five, no, six, five string bass. Or is it six string bass? Either way. And he's just, and you see him play live and you just watch his fingers just fly around. It's just, he's an insane nice. bass player. He's, He's right up there with like Flea in terms wow. of uh, bass playing. So yeah, he he, um, he has some really good. I mean, I haven't listened to the newest one, but um, is it his previous album, the one with the track about Japan? And, oh yeah, uh, that album is uh, Drunk. Drunk, that's the one. Yes, I uh, I've I've listened to that quite a few times. That was really uh, yeah. It, it's sort of it's that interesting mix between it's funky, um, but it's also it's quite funny. But like it's not, it's it, it, as you said, his it, humor's a bit strange, and that it's not, it's not funny in the sense of kind of like a parody band or something, or you know, kind of like wacky people. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a, like it's um, a bit more subtle, kind of like it's it's odd, it's off kilter humor rather mm-hmm. than like jokey humor. So if if you if uh, you know any of you have listened to uh, his album Drunk, then you will like his. It is what it is. It's it's kind of very similar. Like they, uh, you know, some people say, "Oh, well, it's it's kind of like his last one." But if anything, I felt like this one is more um, um, concise. Is that as our as our good word to say? I think yeah, you know, I get you. Uh, more constructive and um, 
yeah so that's my that's my uh, album of the year it is what it is nice well, and this that seems to wrap up what it is hold on i do need to give another special shout out for music of 2020 because okay. uh, no nobody mentioned one of Wales's most promising upcoming artists who released a fantastic album this year. <laughs> uh, Ghost Before Breakfast, The Evening Redness in the West, was a fucking fantastic album. Um, I want to give props to the absolute genius who came up with it. Cruise Control is a fucking banger, and um, I will not hear anything on the contrary. Uh, there'll be a link to the description, link to the album in the description, not link to the description, I don't think you can do that, uh, below. Well, uh, to be honest, lads, I'm a bit upset no one said BTS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, right, okay, so b- before before we, we quit this, oh, so on Here a side go. note, uh in you know, and now and then I like to listen I like to kinda of keep up with uh the music that's big in Japan and stuff. And thankfully Spotify's got a daily updated playlist for the top fifty in Japan. So I I gave that a listen and stuff. Um, the uh, Gurenge by Lisa from the Demon Slayer anime has been in the top ten for the last like five months or something. It's, it's a damn popular song. But anyway, I put that on in the background, um, you know, as I'm in work or something or at home. And two separate times now, I've, you know, been listening to stuff and be like, hey, yeah, this is pretty nice. I'm going to add this to like a playlist. Um, and two different times I've turned on my phone and looked at the song and they've both been by the bts so i i have not only listened to two different bts songs this year i have also kind of enjoyed both of them uh i can't remember like firework or something one of them one of them is genuinely quite a good song like and we don't judge you for that at all there we are not even not even a tiny bit we have Right, don't don't rave this, please. Yeah, God, what have I done? Oh God, wait, <laughs> no, 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 wait, no, 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 that's good. No, we all like BTS here. They are very good. Thank you. Please don't find my home address and send me hate mail and death threats. <laughs> there we are. Although to be, I mean, hey, to be fair, look, no attention is bad attention. Uh, so. <laughs> Right, there we are. Uh, if you do want to, actually, if you do want to start a massive flame war in the comments, that's fine. That's great for the algorithm. It's my video's <laughs> going to get promoted like massive, so that's great. <laughs> um, right, I think, I think that ends the music thing, uh, which also in turn ends this part of Talk Toys. Uh, so we've got one more part coming up. Uh, I won't, I won't say exactly what the categories are, but I'll give you a hint for the very first one next time. It is relating to podcasts. And talking about podcasts, if you happen to really like podcasts like this, then uh, I've I've made other ones. And there's also one called Draw Toys, where we we draw stuff in a limited amount of time, which is quite fun, I think. Um, you know, yeah, that. I think that's about it. No one else has anything to add? Good. Okay, then. So, that is the end of part two. Thank you very much for sticking with us. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you, gents, for joining me for this call. You're welcome. Uh, that's fine, yeah. And keep that's an eye out. Me. Keep an eye out in the next couple of days slash week or so. And part three should be live. So, until next time, goodbye.